So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ahmadu wa usalli ala Rasul al-Kareem. So, Brother Charles was gracious enough to uh, do another podcast with me today. So, inshallah ta'ala, let's uh, begin. Let me start by a question we were discussing earlier. That I was saying that when I was younger, <laughs> when I was young, um, you know, as a, as a Muslim growing up here in the West, one of the things that became a very strong anchor for me was the subject of Quran and science, amongst other subjects. But that was like, I was able to point to certain verses of the Quran and say, look, I don't think anyone but, a, but, but, but Allah himself said these words. Alhamdulillah, I had a grasp of the Arabic language. And uh, I was able to see, okay, wait, th this is quite precise in terms of human observation of nature and as scientists understood it. And for me, that became a very strong um, anchoring. And also because my sheikh uh, taught us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reveal more and more signs. Sanurikum, Allah says in the Quran, soon we will show you our signs fil afaq in the horizons, wa fi anfusikum, and in yourselves, hatta yatabayyana annahu al haqq, until it's absolutely clear this is the truth. Mm -hmm. And I felt, okay, we, and, and as time went on, I felt we've come to the point that we have come to the doors of the unseen. And I'll see, I'll tell you why I'm saying this, because it's like, you know, you can't go further than the black hole and you can't go further than subatomic particles without then beginning to philosophize. Yeah, because because you're starting to say, what are the, and, and then what are the quarks made of? And you can go down and down and they're made of information. And what's information? It's not material anymore, right? Yeah. So, it, you know, it becomes philosophy at a certain point because you can only go so far in, in terms of imperial and then soon, soon after that, I started realizing that, wait, science is taking a turn. For example, in the subject of gender studies, homosexuality and the different pronouns. I think the whole COVID thing was like just a disaster uh, yeah. in terms of and, and things like that, that now it's like science has fallen on its own face in a sense. Uh, I don't know if that's the best word to use, but now we're in a state and the new generation is growing in a state where there is no anchoring of really knowing what is true in a sense. Yes, because, you know, in the West, you know, science, uh, so much of it was built upon atheism, upon saying, you know, early, earlier views of reality were, were, were mythic or incomplete or mythic understandings of science at best, and there's nothing beyond material science, and but they didn't really know what was going on, so they imagined God and all of this. And and so science built itself on, on the grave of religion in the West. Mm -hmm. And now science is losing its credibility in so many ways. I mean, just put it, you know, in, in technical terms, um, you know, 5G networks are playing havoc with other uh, technical systems, you know, with uh, uh, navigational systems on, on aircraft, with, uh, with 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 weather weather systems that predict the weather. I mean, you know, finally, it, it's 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 becoming, you know, it, science is self destructing, and we're we're going to watch it self destruct. You know, it's doing more and more amazing things, and yet it's 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 becoming, you know, totally contradictory even on a technical level, and then you get. I mean, as as uh, Wolfgang Smith, who you know, people should go to Wolfgang Smith's uh, website, which is Philos Dash Sophia, Philos Sophia Dash Sophia Initiative, and you know, he he he's um, he's a Christian. He's also studied Vedanta and uh, Ramana Maharshi, and he. Um, you know he, he he's a he's a true scientist he's a, a true he's he's quite elderly now but you know he's a mathematician and um 
and a rocket scientist. He, he developed the equations that allow space, you know, vehicles to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere without either bouncing off, yeah, without either bouncing <laughs> off or burning up. So he did some, some very real work, you know, but, you know, and, but he's been following physics, you know, more or less from a metaphysical standpoint. And he says now, well, physics has lost its mind. And mm. not just physics. I mean, you know, you, you have this this guy, you know, who's big in the UFO world, Avi Lub, who people say is in some branch of Israeli intelligence. I don't know about that, but he's at Harvard now. He's an astronomer and astrophysicist at, at Harvard, and he's saying the most insane things, you know. Uh, we have to do I? Pardon me? A uh, Avi Lub, okay. Yeah, L-O-E-B. A-V-I, first name, L-O-E-B. And, you know, just look at his stories. He, he will say, well, we have to <clears throat> we have to make a make, make a treaty with uh, <laughs> with other uh, with just, other uh, wow. uh, okay. you know, civil, uh, civilizations in, uh, in other parts of the universe uh, and, and agree not to destroy the universe. Because if we would do such and such a thing, it, 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 it would start to destroy existence. And, and anyone who gets um, Te te technologically advanced enough we'll be able to destroy the universe and so we have to have a treaty with these people that we haven't even met yet it may not exist uh you know to to to, to say you know like like a nuclear arms limitation treaty we will we'll never use this technology and he's just out there and that and that's not the craziest thing he said and you know uh science is becoming science fiction at this point yeah so he's an american jew an astronomer thinks alien tech could be on the ocean floor. Not everyone agrees. And he's a Harvard professor. To get money to go and, and look for it. Now, you know, so. Israeli scientist proves his far out theory on interstellar meteor is down to earth. Yeah, so. He may, he may, oh, that's a more, more. You know, I've, I've heard much better descriptions of what, what that is than, than an alien spaceship. But, but it's now, if you say, it, it could be an alien spaceship, you will get a lot of attention. You might get grants, you know, who knows? I mean, I mean, a, a more prosaic explanation disappears because it's not fantastic enough. And when, when you get to this point, you know, science has always been very conserved, you know, prove, it, it has to be proved every step of the way. And that, that's still going on. But th there are people coming to the fore in the realm of science who, who really don't care about that, you know? That, that they want uh, sensationalism is working for them, and why, why should they uh, stop? You know, this is you can just see a lot of this. <laughs> and um, well, okay, science. Um, th th this has this has to do with postmodernism. Postmodernism came forward and said, "Well, you know, uh, the meta." meta narratives you know the big ideas that are supposed to encompass everything and every religion is a kind of a meta narrative and science up until recently was a meta narrative where there was a great deal of agreement between scientists around the world well in world war ii you you you, you began that began to break up you had you know not Nazi science, which which will not believe any anything that a Jewish scientist came up with, because we want Aryan science. And then there was Soviet science, which will not believe anything that a capitalist comes up up with, because this has to be good communist science. And then after World War II, that that sort of faded away, and and you and you got more of a of a collegiality and and, and of uh, you know communication between scientists. Well, this is now breaking down again, you know. With with Russia, China, and the United States are going to start to say, and and, and are starting to say, uh, you know, that, that this is heretical science coming from our enemies, so we won't believe it. It gets ideologized, and once it becomes ideologized, it loses all objectivity, hmm. you know. And this is what um, what post postmodernism wanted to say. With, well, the reason we don't like overarching paradigms or, or meta -narr meta narratives of big stories is because they're always based on power and so we want the little the little guy the little the little ideas that have been suppressed to all come forward and and, and have a right to speak and up to a point that's a very good thing but that point ha has been reached some time ago and we've gone overboard to to where every view 
And there's a number of stages here. Every view, no matter how crazy, you know, I mean, if you, you have a view based upon just in the realm of science, an experimental science of, of several centuries old, then you have another view based on somebody's crazy idea, like a flat earth theory, you know, but mm -hmm. these have equal right to speak because, they, they, you know, there's no, there's no objective truth. There's no meta, meta narrative means there's no objective truth. And th th that's basically what, um, what, uh, Postmodernism is saying, and and so, but but the effect of that on science, if there's no objective truth, eventually, uh, the idea of um, of natural law is going to disappear. And if there's no natural law, there is no science. Hmm. There's only some kind of magic. Where so, well, so, that's what so, they're doing with the pronouns. You know, he, she, they, yeah, it, yeah. and it's no longer your chromosomes. It's just whatever you feel or whatever you well, think and it, and it's it's just a flat out a flat out lie you know and and you know and but um if you and and, and this is the next thing okay so, so you say all every voice has a right to speak so you think well at least at least we we we, well, we, now, we now have total pluralism where at least there's not going to be you know maybe everybody's crazy maybe there's no objective truth anymore but at least we've gotten rid of bigotry no we didn't something because the human mind cannot stand you know total uncertainty about everything yeah and so in the shadow of all this let let every voice speak you know that post modernism you know the ultimate liberal uh, uh worldview uh you know in the shadow of that comes on the other hand no voices are allowed to speak except the woke voice suddenly it flipped 180 degrees and became you know uh a, 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 an, in, an insane kind of um, dogmatism, you know, one view, this is it, you know, may, 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 maybe, you know, that the, there are, you know, 17 or 28 different genders, but there's only one view that you, that, 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 that you're allowed. And if, if anybody, and we've got algorithm, algorithms, algorithms, and, and if, if you say oh, something, yeah. there you go. all of this view, you know, you, you, you will be canceled, you know, by the algorithm. And so, you know, it, it flipped from from total liberalism to a kind of, you know, uh, liberal fascism. And then now it's total dogmatism in no time at all. It happened mm -hmm. very fast. Flip, flip, you know. And so science, you know, when it, when there's no belief in objective truth, the idea all objective truths are simply enforced by 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 social power. There, there's no objective truth. You know, I mean, whoever wins you know, the, the social power game says, well, we're the objective truth. Well, we'll show them, you know, you, you, there is no objective truth because all these other realities have a right to speak too. Okay, you do that. When you do that, though, there, and there's no objective truth and science starts to die because th there's no sense of natural law anymore. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and then, of course, it flips and, and terms, turns from absolute chaotic liberalism to you know heavy duty dogmatism and what the heavy duty dogmatism may end up to be in the realm of, of science and religion is the ufo religion you know mm -hmm. i mean you know it, it it may become dogma that we were created we had to have been created by uh extraterrestrial uh beings you know centuries millennia more advanced than we are through genetic engineering because how else could it ha have happened what this is is a perversion of the kind of work that the people who are studying intelligent design, like William Dembski and other people, you know, uh, uh, looking at at the complexity of and, and, and the precision of DNA uh, with, with with according to information theory, simply say, no way this could have randomly happened. This mm -hmm. has been designed. And we start to think that way because we're designing an immensely complicated things like computers. And we know the computers don't just happen. They were designed. And so, so then we look at DNA and says, well, but so this was the design. And, 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 you know, and the people who were doing intelligent design said, well, of course, this will lead everybody back to a belief in God. But then the other ideology came and says, no, it's, it's not God. It's the UFO aliens who, who, created us through genetic engineering now the question of who engineered them and who engineered the people who engineered them <laughs> and all that they don't want to go there you know yeah. 
but but this is this is what happens. So science has fallen on very hard times, and um, and and so what what you have, you know, ideology takes the place of the experimental method. Mm. You know, if the, if, if the experimental method says something that contradicts ideology, throw it out. So that's the end of science. So we see technical, so in scientific civilization coming to its end in many ways, you know, the unintended consequences of, 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 of you know, scientific development, you know, the effect on the climate, the effect, you know, the poisoning of everything, the, 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 the fact that, you know, 5G networks will, will, will destroy other, you know, technical uh, uh, systems that we need because they're not compatible. But, mm. you know, economic forces say, sorry, you have to keep going, you know, like, like when, you know, some years ago, uh, it, it became legal <laughs> for civilians to own drones. In, in this country. And I started writing letters and emails to people. You're crazy. You know, I mean, anybody can be a, can be a terrorist now, you know, I mean, yeah. these will be weaponized, won't they? And then people said, of course oh, it will at some point. No, no, this is just recreational. That's fine. It, or it'll help. It'll help in, in, you know, uh, with surveying or something. And nobody saw that, you know, but, you know, economic forces say, Hey, we, we can make money with these. And so we have to do it. Mm -hmm. So, once that happens, you know, you, you're, you're seeing like the end of civilization in so many ways. For example, the super liberal um, uh, administration of San Francisco, California, which is, you know, basically where I grew up. I grew up just north of there and, uh, you know, ha has created a situation where the homeless problem is so bad mm. because they want to say, well, you know, the homeless are... Uh, you know, uh, they, they, they got a right to be home. They got a right to be home. So, you know, they're, they're, this, this, this is their, yeah. their expression of their freedom, right? Which is an insane thing to say. And it got so bad in, in San Francisco that uh, they, they had to um, repeal the laws, uh, making, it, making public defecation illegal because it, they couldn't be enforced. Mm -hmm. And the effect of that, you know, there will be huge plagues will come. But what's happening now is uh, untreated human waste is washed into the bay and is creating blooms of algae that's killing tens of thousands and thousands of fish. It's destroying the environment. Mm -hmm. And now the city of San Francisco has to come up with $14 billion to clean up this problem. Wow. And th th this, this is like, you know, an ideological liberalism that that says we have no right to get the kick the homeless off the street. They are the people, you know, mm -hmm. right? And then and and then so it destroys the city and it destroys the environment. So you know, and and you're seeing things reach insane, um, you know, limits like that everywhere in, in the world. Yeah. The other thing that uh, you know, comes to mind about this dogmatism or ideological. Uh, kind of like overarching different groups is that you lose the ability to communicate because every like for example just yeah. as an example flat earthers they have their own terminologies now their own science quote unquote their own terminologies to describe the world that they believe in that is completely different from mainstream science yeah. And do, do, do they have terms of abuse for, for, for people who, who don't believe in the flat earth you know, I, I'll bet they do. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and so, and, and it's so interesting, but there's, there's, so the one thing is there's no possibility of communication, yeah. which means that there's no possibility of growth. Right. Right. There's, there's and, and then the other thing is that I guess what's happening to this new generation, which is that they don't trust no one. Yeah. And, and, you know, you understand why, because, you know, how, how many, you know, statements of the truth, like, like, you know, the, uh, the, the there's, there's no danger in the vaccine and, and it works really well and things like this, which it just turned out not to be true. Mm -hmm. and, and, but, but that's a long list of things going back for many years, you know, and people finally said, and on top of that, um, 
you know, the internet, everything you see in the internet is 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 some kind of made up image. I I look at these YouTube videos about uh, you know discoveries in astronomy, you know, the James Webb Telescope or whatever. Uh, you know, which are sensationalized. They always say, you know, scientists scientists discover terrifying realities out in space. You know, there's a, there's a monster out there. And then you listen to it, that's not what it's about at all. That just gets your attention. So that's a kind of lie. And, and, and then you see the imagery and you, every other image, you know, you, you have an actual image from James Webb and, and then you have an, an artist's rendition. Then you have something else and you have something else. And, 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 and there's no differentiations made between something that's totally made up, or maybe this is a, an artist's rendition of what we think we might discover, and this is an actual photograph. And there's no distinction, mm. you know? It's, it's just, it's all run together. And even the actual photographs are falsely colorized and, and everything. And, and, you know, everything is Photoshopped. And, and now we're in the era of deep fakes where, you know, you, you, you can have, you know, videos of anyone saying or doing anything, and it looks real, and it's not necessarily real at all. Mm. You know, so so you know, the, the the environment of information we live in, uh, more or less proves that everything is a lie, that nothing is to be believed. And so you say, well, I'm not going to believe unless I see it. Well, but that's not going to work because you say, but but this is all maybe we're living in a computer simulation, and and. Uh, and you know, all all I saw was a glitch in the matrix. You know, I didn't really that didn't really happen. That was just a glitch in the matrix. There is no objective reality. So finally, when you get to that level, um, you know, you 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 can't you can't see the signs of a law on the horizons and in yourself because mm. it's all a lie. You know, and and so that means you have to choose your own truth and and decide to believe in it. And people choose different things, and flat Earth is one of them. You know, so. And so, what advice would you give to the Muslim youth, or even young adults, of how in this world, how do how does a Muslim go about ascertaining truth? Well, who, who are the human beings that you love and respect? They're not computer simulations. We hope that you have some. You know, that's that's one. What we're asking, you know, what, what are the touchstones to reality that prevent people from going insane? You know, mm. and you know, you 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 can certainly say that the, the Quran is one of the major touchstones, but people have to have the right relationship with the Quran, you know, and and you have to have a sense of objective reality. Um uh, or, 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 or the Quran, you know, you will not be able to understand it. You know, it, it, your, your, your projections on it, your ideas of what are being said will lead you astray because you, you can't evaluate it because you don't, don't have any sense of the reality of the truth. If there's no such thing as truth, you can, you can open the truest book that, 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 that ever came to humanity and you won't get any truth out of it because you don't know what truth is. Mm. So how, how do people, you know, Get, get a sense of reality, get a sense of truth. I mean, it's it's um, it's very hard. We, we used to say that that you know, death is the moment of truth. You know, I mean, if if you realize you're going to die, if you if or if you go to war, used to people used to say, you know, you know, it's good to go to war because it'll make a man of you. You know, and because there was a universal draft, and people would have that experience. You know, and 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 young men. Uh, would have the experience at least of training, you know, in in in, in a boot camp and and, and and under hard circumstances, wh whether or not there was a war, and then they would have the experience at war, very often. And and you, you say, you know, now now I, I I you know, I I've grown out of my ch childish fantasies and I, I see greater truth. But that's not necessarily going to work now, you know. I mean, how much of war is fought through a computer screen, too, mm. you know? And and uh, the pe people's sense of, uh, you know, who knows? Who people? Life and life and death are not real to people. And um, you know, I mean, it's it's like the the thing is, you you have to have faith in order to get faith. You, you have to have a, an innate sense of truth, which we do have. We have an innate sense of truth. 
that's that's what the human being is. We, we, we're destined for spiritual truth and for objective understanding of the world around us. But but that's that's is so hidden now. It's it's, it's and it's hard to believe in. But if 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 you can believe that there's a such such a thing as an objective truth, which means a truth other than you and your fantasies that 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 you need to uh, conform yourself to, and that, and that you're beholden to, and you owe you owe something to that truth because it's real, mm. you know. And you and you you at this point are nothing but a mass of fantasies. But you can you can become real. If you if you believe in that truth and conform yourself to it on whatever level, certainly the, the the highest level is is spiritual truth, which can be found in the Quran and found in in you know in spiritual experience. But but th there are other levels which, which which have to do with you know I mean if 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 you're going to uh, you know take it upon yourself to to start a family, which fewer and fewer people want to do, you, you're going to be confronted with reality. You're going to have children who are not just fantasy images, they're real, they have needs, you love them, hopefully, God willing, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, you have to protect them, you don't want them to, to, to be hurt or injured or, or, or led astray. And, and so s something becomes, life becomes real to you. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you live your life in a computer screen, you're going to think the whole world is a computer screen and that nothing is real. And then, yeah, and, and you're going to feel, and and you, maybe I don't feel good anymore about this life, so I'll just put push the delete button, and you know, and, and you you will die, at, you know, you will say, well, death death has no terrors for me because I don't care about life, so why should I care about death? And it's total nihilism, you know. So, so you know, and try to live a real life, and you know, say how what's how do you do that? First, you have to believe that it is such a thing. You know, and and you know, God willing, you know, you, you will have something in your life that, that that will at least make you suspect that there is such a thing as reality, and a real life, and 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 a a, a, a life in, in which you're you're responsible to reality, and you know later you, you can understand that reality is Allah, as God, because but but how about just reality to begin with, and then then you will see you know hopefully you know deeper and deeper you'll understand that that the absolute objective reality is god because he he, he is beyond your ideas you know far be it you know f from you know he's he's infinitely beyond whatever is attributed to him in other words he's beyond your fantasies about yeah. him yeah. even 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 you know actually very well well-developed fantasies which might have uh, parts of truth elements of truth he's still beyond them hmm. allahu akbar you know, yes, and absolutely. Uh, you know, we, we we just we just pray. Every one of us has to pray that, that we will not ultimately lose our grasp of reality. Two points on that, that I'd like to share with you. One thing that I, I want to know what your reflections are on one of the things that I had in my mind as I was growing up. At some point, uh, I think I was talking to my sheikh, and I decided, okay, this is how I'm going to proceed forward in terms of knowledge, right? Because so we have we learn our tradition, we learn our Islam, but then now you have to connect it with the world uh, mm -hmm. beyond. And with and with yourself, you know, because you and, are and also yourself. a unique individual, and you you know you can't just say, well, this is Islam and I'll forget all I am and just pour myself into this mold and th then I'll then I'll be okay. You know, you 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 have you have to make it yours you know and 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 you have to give yourself as you are to it and mm. make it yours in a real way and that that's a whole other um whole other struggle you know? so one of the thing you know the verse of the quran where ibrahim والسلام, he says to allah oh, Allah, how would you give life to the dead and he said well i'm talking do you not believe and he says well i want my heart to have tranquility though and then he says, okay, take four birds. So I thought, after talking to one of the sheikhs, I said, okay, I'm for me to really have uh, what we call in, in I, I guess even the Islamic tradition is a good um, 
it gives you a good template because in Sharia we say something is qat'i, absolute. And dhanni, something is, it's not absolute, but it's it's probable. Mm -hmm. Right? And so the Islamic sciences, especially in Islamic law, what is this evidence? Is it sarihan? Is it like, like it's in the text, la ilaha illallah. Okay, that's in the text. You can't argue with that. Yeah. Right? But, uh, but something that is induced maybe may not be true. For example, uh, Maryam alayhi salam, she is the greatest woman. And so who will she be married to in Jannah? Well, she'll be married to Prophet Muhammad in Jannah. Well, it's pretty logical, but it's not in the text, right? It's it's yeah. an in, You're inducing it. Right. So it could be true. It could not be true. Uh, in the same way, when Allah gives a certain command, is this command clearly spelled out or is it an indication to something you know, these are different levels of understanding it, is it a command is it not a command you know is it it is a sunnah okay yeah. so and even is, sunnahs then have different for, for a particular occasion is another thing or yeah. is, is universal you know in all places and times exactly exactly so the islamic tradition does at least for me gave me a model that within the tradition, but also like dealing with the outside world, it did help me. But I was talking about the four birds because I made it a point in my life that if I was going to take something as like knowledge, this is not just information, but this is knowledge for me, that I would have at least four solid proofs from four different perspectives oh. that this is what this is. And so that's how I kind of like always proceeded. And even if I was in meetings with the ulama or if I was just in meetings in school or whatever, I never said a word till I had at least four reasons written down, <laughs> you know. And and if somebody, if I said something and somebody didn't like it, then I would bring out my other points if, if it was a need or I'd just be quiet because there's no need, you know. But so that was one thing that helped me in my life is that uh, I remember I wrote this little article, paper, the booklet on truth and absolutism. And one of the things I realized as I was writing that is that truth is truth from many different perspectives. I mean, if you take homosexuality, you could give an argument of genetics or something like this, even though that's not even true. But if you did, it's true from one perspective. But if you look at the economic costs, the biological aspect, if you look at all the other aspects, the, 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 the cost to society in terms of medical bills, you find more reasons in one direction than one reason. in one, And the truth is always where the, the more reasons will be. Mm -hmm. Like you could take the Palestinian-Israeli situation, for example, the same thing. So I'm just saying that to get your reflections on what I just said, something that helped me keep myself grounded. Uh, one of the interesting things, you know, how how we argue, oh, Hanafi, Shafi, Maliki, you know, different opinions, and you weigh the evidences. And uh, so that was kind of like a training in a sense that not everything is absolute. Something could be probable. Something could be possible. Something is definitely true. So that... Even in the legalistic, meaning not in the in the spiritual, because in the spiritual you're headed only for the truth in a sense, right? Yeah. No, it's, but it's, in, it's, in the legal Islam, oriented di directly to the absolute. By the time you get to the spiritual level, yeah. But in in the in the legal aspect of Islam, it does train the mind to not think mono, like in 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 black and white. Mm -hmm. If so, anyway, do you, does I guess my question to you is: is that that was my experience, and then what are your reflections on that and the postmodern world and the Muslim youth in the postmodern world? Well, it's you know, it's it's a deep thing when when a, a true rationality is. Uh, connected with a true spirituality, and when the true spirituality becomes, you know, the the the, the source and inspiration for objectivity on all other levels, mm. you know, that's that's what we hope for. 
you know, because my, you know, my background, you know, as a child and young man growing up was in, in Catholicism. And I, I got a sense from, my, you know, that the high, high, I was in Catholic high school, you know, that, that, that's as far as I went in, in formal education. But the Catholic high school had a lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of good in it. And, and I, I got a sense that there was an objective truth. You know, I, I got a sense that there was such a thing as the science of metaphysics. You know, because the, the, the basic belief system was scholastic philosophy or, you know, the, the basic science of, of truth, of philosophical truth was that. And so, you know, my teachers were, were not, you know, great scholars in, in, in this field. And but they just gave me a sense that that existed, that, that there was a possibility of, you know, a, a, a union of rationality. And and something that was more mystical, you know, and and there wasn't wasn't a contradiction, so that's where I got that, you know, and and it took me a long time to to fill in that, and by the time I was f filling in a lot of it, I was I was already a Muslim because the Catholic Church, you know, came to a sad end, except for a tiny remnant, you know, back in the sixties. People don't realize that. And there are some people in the larger Catholic Church who are trying to bring back the tradition, but still it's devastated as compared to what yeah. it was when I was growing up. So yeah. <laughs> so uh, so you know, I I don't know, I don't know what really what what else to say, but you know, that there is um well you said one thing that's very important, and I think that's very key, and that is to start off maybe reading the Quran, right? That that is a good foundation. It gives you a good philosophical macro perspective. Yeah, you know, if 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 you want, if you understand, you know, if you understand what is said and 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 understand that it's speaking on many different levels. You know, in some cases, it's just clear commands and prohibitions. And on on in other ways, it's it's got a philosophical, you know, metaphysical dimension. In other ways, it it has you know symbolic stories. Which, um, you know, touch on your higher metaphysical perceptions, but uh, you know can't necessarily be. Um, you know, the, the tafsir of those is not simple, or 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 it's not one dimension. So it's got all of these things are going on. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah. But you know, we're 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 supposed to start. Doesn't the Quran say, you know, start with what's obvious? Don't yeah. immediately go to the allegorical stuff and 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 start tripping on that. Start. I think that's on. a very very important yeah. point that many people, especially now when I've seen the Quranic exegesis, I think people are after secrets sometimes more than just okay. What are the basics, right? What are the yeah. clear? Um, and then you eventually can, I guess, work towards those. But even that uh many times is a you can say something that is a work in progress I yeah well it I'm... always will be and you know you you can't necessarily possess yourself of the secrets the secrets are gifts you know and 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 a deeper exegesis of the quran is a gift you know mm -hmm. look at the quran you know like 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 room Rumi, Rumi, i forget if i said this in another interview but you know he, he said the uh the Quran is 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 like a uh, a new bride who, who is um, shy of being unveiled. Hmm. You can't you know can't just say okay we're married let's you know let's jump in the sack you know you it's it's very it's a delicate process. She's a virgin you know she hasn't been unveiled before you know slowly slowly you know and and otherwise there will be a kind of a violation involved. Because saying, well, I'm going to walk walk right into this book because I'm a Muslim and I'm going to possess myself of the secrets, and that's not the way to do it. Mm -hmm. you know? Because because it, it truth gives itself to you, you know. You 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 do the work, but but it finally has to say, okay, yes, now is the time. Subhanallah, and that's why we pray for guidance over and over and over and over again. I you know I realize the importance of that now in my life. Uh, my sheikh before he died his last one of his last duas that he made in public is oh Allah prevent us from being deceived I, I don't know it's not the words in, in the language like I'm translating what he said but it was 
or or the verses in the Quran, Alhamdulillah ladhi hadana li hadha, wallah, Alhamdulillah for Allah who guided us to this. Wa ma kunna nahtadiya lawla an hadana Allah. We wouldn't have been guided had Allah not guided us. Or in another verse, la tuzi'a qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana. Don't let our hearts get twisted after he's guided us. It's a guidance and truth. They're not to be taken as for granted. And, and I see a lot of people go towards the truth. And then somehow something something catches, and usually it could be something sensational, you know, or some something that some glitter of the world that will yeah. cause them to slip. Yeah, because you know the the nafs loves to spiritualize itself, you know, and, and <laughs> uh, the, the, that is the a very nafs, interesting word. Is, it's not just, you know, you, 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 this is gross lust, this is gross greed, this is gross anger. No, it, it, it's a lot of subtlety in the nafs. And, and, and it, you know, um, a subtle possessiveness of the truth. If you think you can possess the secrets, you're already astray. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the secrets exist before you and, and they possess you. And, you know, if you're faithful to them, they will reveal part of themselves to you. Uh, at the right time for a purpose, not mm -hmm. just because you want to collect secrets because it's fascinating, you know, they will, they will come to you for a real, and the, the, this is another approach to reality, you know, um, mm -hmm. receptiv yeah, receptivity. <laughs> yeah. Receptivity, yeah. I've noticed a lot of people that convert to Islam or revert to Islam, they were asking Allah because of maybe some difficulty they were going in life or they reached the bottom of the barrel or some difficulty in their life and they were asking Allah, oh Allah, guide, not in those words maybe, but the gist is, you know, guide me, I need help, God help me. Or I've noticed that in a lot of people I've talked to that converted to Islam, they had this, like uh, like uh, Yusuf Islam, for example, the famous uh, Cat Stevens, oh, yeah. that as he was drowning, that's what he was saying. And I've noticed that and usually when I will be talking to people, I might get a sense of, you know, this person's in trouble and he's asking Allah. So like one day I even said it to a person. I said, you know, you've been asking God for help, haven't you? And he's like, yeah. So I was like, inshallah, he will definitely convert. Right. So. Uh, so anyway, so, yeah, I mean, I think that attitude is very important especially for these times where it's very easy to get tricked um yeah um and and you know that if 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 we want to be tricked i mean allah tells us the truth he is the truth and he presents himself to us as the truth but some people want to be tricked i don't it, it's a strange tr strange desire but you know because if you want to be tricked, you, you you will feel suddenly things are less real and therefore you don't have as much responsibility. Some of the burden is temporarily off. Oh, right. I've gone, yeah. I've gone you know, in, in, into a dream world, into a fantasy. And now I, I can breathe easier for a moment because I don't have to have this burden of, of the truth. And if you keep doing that and Allah will say, look, this is the truth. Uh, you know, uh, it, 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 it is clear and it has become clear, you know, do you want the truth? And you say, well, yes, part of it or yes and no. And, and then the, the day may come when Allah says, all right, I'll give you exactly what you're asking. for." Uh, and if you won't listen to what I'm saying, then you will learn the hard way. And that's, you know, Allah is the best of plotters. It's, it's, mm -hmm. he, he doesn't fool us, you know, because he, he enjoys, uh, you know, you know, swindling us. It, 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 it's like if that's our attitude, we're going to have to learn through the consequences of that attitude. Mm -hmm. That's the only way. You know, so. That reminds me of the story of uh, Prophet Adam. So you know, the angels when they had an issue with the creation of Prophet Adam, they objected immediately because they were sincere. Yeah, you know. And they didn't hide their objection. They said, why are you going to create this thing that's going to create so much problems? Yeah. And Iblis, Shaitan, he hid his objection in his heart. And he hid it until the last moment. 
where Allah forced him, in a sense, <laughs> to bring out his objection, right? Uh, maybe had, I mean, I'm saying this hypothetically just to make the point that had Allah not told the angels to bow down to Adam, he would have kept that in his heart even till today, for example. Yeah. And and so I guess, you know, you, you do need a lot of inner work because Iblis thought he was very pious. And so, I mean, that's the level of subtlety that can... I guess, misguide someone if it's in their destiny. Yes, yes. I mean, I know. And and, and so, you know, Allah, if, if he loves you, if you have that tendency, which a lot of us do, and, and, and if he loves you, he will reduce you to helplessness from time to time. So, you know, you will say, well, here, here, is, here, here are the secrets that I've been relying upon. Here are the subtleties that, that I've collected. This ought to be able to take care of, of, of my problems. And they, and they just, they don't work. You know, it's as if, what good was all of that? You mm -hmm. know, and, and you, you have to come back and say, you know, Allah help me. You know, there's no might or power but in Allah. So you have to do it. But anyway, we're going to talk about hyperborea and all of this. Okay. Yes. So, Bismillah, let's talk about that for a bit. <laughs> yeah, well, oh. okay, with a flat earth you know it's it's an interesting obviously it's not objectively scientifically true but people who don't believe anything they haven't seen well all they have to do is 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 watch a ship you know like a, sh a ship with masts sail out on a clear day over the ocean and you see the masts slowly go down until they disappear yeah. you know it doesn't just fade away it sinks so, yes. you, so you actually see the curvature of the earth with yes. your own two eyes, if you yes. if you want to go that far, but you know, the, the, as a myth, um, you know, I mean, the flat Earth certainly the idea of praying toward Mecca works better on a flat Earth, right? Because if if you're if you're on the opposite side of of of, of a, a sphere, you know, how how are you going to face Mecca? Every direction is toward, you know, and you know, so so it. And, and, and it's closer to a traditional worldview because people didn't travel that fast and, and, and that far very often. And, and, and the earth was effectively flat for people. You didn't, you didn't fly over the pole and go to Europe, you know, it's like, you know, so, so in a certain sense, it carries a, a feeling of a more traditional a world of the past. So there's something to that. But that doesn't mean it's it's the Earth is really flat because the Earth was known to be round in, in in the Middle Ages, at least in the West, you know, by a lot of people. This is not a new idea, you know. Yeah. And um, also, the Qibla calculations were based upon spherical trig trigonometry. Okay, I didn't I didn't know that. That's yeah, interesting. and so uh, they actually used spherical uh, uh, trigonometry to make the calculations of the Qibla. No. <laughs> in the beginning, uh, many Muslims thought the earth is flat. Many of the Mufassirin of Quran thought it was flat. Because the Quran says it's sutihat. We have flat yeah, the earth. Spread out, yeah. But later on, the consensus became that, no, it's it's it, like Ibn Hazm, one of the great scholars of Spain, yeah, right, uh, yeah. mentions it. And then also Imam Nathaniah says, by now in this day and age of ours, it is a consensus that the earth is spherical. Yeah, and, and, and some of the ancient Greeks knew that, not all of them, but you know. Yeah. So, so that was yeah. there. So so um, but what's interesting about it also is is it you know, you you have a sense that, that there is a reality that is below you which is, you know, where things are heavier and heavier and heavier, there's more and more pressure. And, you know, it, at, when you get far enough down, that becomes the fire, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, but on, on another level, the, 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 this is, is the pole of substance. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and, but then you say, and there are things which are above you, they're higher level. I mean, the, the way things were looked at was, well, the earth is solid. And then, and, and, and then, you know that the the, the uh, ocean is obviously, you know, on top of the earth because we know that that it has a, it has a solid 
you know, ocean floor. And so that's the next level. And then, then there's the air, you know, where, where that we breathe and then we, the birds are in. And then, and then uh, higher than that, higher than the air is, you know, the, the planets and the stars. And so you, you, you have this world where our image of the, the physical world uh, di could directly correspond to a metaphysical sense that there are different levels of reality. So th that's, that's the use of a, of a flat earth. And, and so it's possible if you accept the obvious, should be obvious fact that the world is round, then you can go around and say, well, but from our point of view, just standing on the earth, you know, without, you know, without flying in airplanes or looking at things with telescopes, just with our unaided senses in our human body standing erect upon the earth, you know, in such a way that, that it's as if we were a bridge between, between heaven and earth because we stand vertically, you know, like most of the animals don't, you know. So that 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 and, and that has something to do with the human being having possessed the amana. We are we are vertical axial beings, hmm. and so so as long as you, you don't take it literally and saying, well, that means the earth is flat. No, but th there's there's something a privileged in that that natural human perspective with the earth below, you know, the air around us, the sky above. Um, which which is a support for an understanding of the nature of, the, of reality because mm. we're human beings and, and we are you know composed and, and formed on all the names of God and so and so we're potentially in the presence of all reality just by our being and so there's some there's something to so if I understand what you're saying don't take it literally don't believe you know that 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 everybody you know all of the things we've seen of you know, the, the photographs of the earth from the moon all lies you know right. all and 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 you know <laughs> that, that then you become a crank you know so, so <laughs> if i can restate what you said in a different way so like we have borak the the horse or the mule that came to the yeah. prophet so it had an earthly aspect in a sense it was a mule but it had the wings right yeah and in the same way a human being has an innate sense i guess uh because of archetypes has an innate sense of kind of like i'm here on earth and then the divine is upward vertical in a sense not necessarily meaning from a purely theological perspective allah has no location right yeah. so it's, it's not and, necessarily and, or, or he is everywhere or his 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 privileged you know point of presence is within the heart according to hadith Qudsi, right but yeah yeah you it's natural to think of of the divine or the angelic at least you know as, as above us because it's it's things are lighter and more expansive, as, you know, and more and, and more more magnificent. What a, look at those stars, you know. So, mm. yeah. yeah, and and that's very interesting, very important because the Quran talks about this very experience you're talking about, like looking at the stars, right? Uh, it even says for the Prophet, very interestingly, when it was it talking about the issue of qibla, which has to do with an earthly kind of like plane. Oh Prophet, وسلم, oh beloved, we see your face keep going to the looking to the sky. Uh, more as a spiritual innateness rather than like Allah is in this direction, not in that yeah, sense. And, and of course, you know, and then people make everything literalistic there. I think there's some people who 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 think that God must be a huge quasar or like. The, if you find the biggest galaxy or the biggest quasar in space, that's got to be God. There are people who think that way nowadays, mm -hmm. you know, which is, you know, of course, idolatry. And that this is something that uh, that that Abraham learned. He was not supposed to worship all those things, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> because the sun sets, the stars disappear. And, uh, you know, that, that's that's not Allah because Allah does not set. So uh, now coming to the uh, issue that you wanted to touch today on the hard for me to say the word hyperborea, it's, right? It's 
hyperborea. Well, okay, okay. Hyperborea, it's related to what I just said because it has to do with um, the pole, the verticality. Now, hyperborea, uh, mythically, it, it means it means beyond the north, you know, uh, like the aurora borealis is the northern lights. So hyperborea means beyond the north. And there, there was a myth that the Greeks and perhaps other peoples had that in the far north, there was this paradise, which it, in which was always springtime and uh, in which the sun never set. And, but it was behind the north wind. Everything got colder and colder and colder as you went to the north. And then suddenly you go beyond that and you get to a place where, you know, er everything is, is, uh, spring-like and, and warm and and it, it's a paradise. Um, and this may simply be there were early explorers th that you know went north of the Arctic Circle in the summer and saw that the sun virtually never set, and they came back and told the story. And you know, and, and and it became you know, you know, altered you know to to be there's an eternal paradise. Thing. Mm -hmm. But there's the idea. You know, now uh, some people say that that you know some different you know prim primitive tribes and perhaps the Norse did this. You know, I'm not sure, but you know, di different you know say that's our homeland. That's where we came from. Mm, yeah. Now, and then and then uh, the Nazis and the various people who wanted to put the Aryan race above all other races seized upon that and said, "We, the Aryans, came you know because we're in, in Norse." So we came from the north, and that's that's and everybody else. We don't know how they ever, you know, cr crawled up out of the mud of the earth, but we came from, from the northern paradise. Yeah. So that's where it started to become, you know, racialized and, and perverted, and you know. But anyway, what's interesting about her hyperborea though is uh, it has to do with the pole star, you know. I mean, and you know, it, the, the, there's one. Um, sense of divinity that you know that, that comes through our five senses just looking at the uh, the world around us and you know like looking to the east and the, the sun rises the sun you know the egyptians say well the sun lives in his underworld you know beneath us but now he's risen and he's shedding his light on the earth and this is very a sacred moment and sacred reality now that's understandable that, that people would look at things that way either as a symbol that would help them see some reality of Allah that was beyond that, or as an idol that would take the place of Allah because they didn't understand, you know, what Fritz Schuen calls the metaphysical transparency of phenomena. Mm. You know, He's, everything is a sign of Allah, and that's a sign. It's a very deep sign. The stars are a sign. The moon is a sign. Okay. Uh, but, but the other orientation is, well, look, um, you, you look... To the north, and you see the North Star, you know, in 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 the midst of the, of the con you know, at the you know constellations of the bears. You know, there's a little bear, and there's you know the the big bear. You know, um, actually, the, the little bear is, is is directly around the pole star, and uh, that's the one place that doesn't move. You know, all the all the the, the rest of, of the vast sky and the sun and the moon. They all move, but that's just just there. It's the pivot of everything. It's the kutub of everything. Mm. It's the soul. And that was that impressed itself very deeply upon upon the human human beings who looked at that. And I said, and that is like like I say of T. S. Eliot in the Ford Quartets. You know, this line, the still point of the turning world. And so. I call this the visible point of eternity in the created order. It's like if it doesn't move, you know, that 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 must be, you know, where where Allah lives, you know, at the pole, because he doesn't change with time. Mm -hmm. he, he he's not subjective to cycles, he just is who he is, and there he is, there it is. That star is the one star that doesn't move. So mm -hmm. that, that that's the whole hyper, sense of hyperborean spirituality. And the the north It's very interesting because the Quran mentions the Rabbu Sha'ra, 
So Surah Najm, which means stars, the Surah of stars. And then over there, Allah says, and he is the Rabb, he is the master, the Rabb of the North Pole, the North Star. Shia, so, the Cyrus. Yes. And, and, you know, the, the, this, there, there are many uh, actually Siber Siberian and Central Asian peoples and religions that, that look at that as, as, you know, that's the point of where the high God lives, Prince Ulgan, and, or, you know, by Ulgan, you know, the, yeah. the, you know um, ancient Mongolian mythology, you know, that, that's, and it's sort of, it's universal, you can find that everywhere, you know, and, and, and so, um, the way that Kitty go behind the computer, that's right. Uh, the way that works out is the North is actually a projection up, up, upon the outer world of, of the vertical path. It's as if the North Star is above our heads at all times, you know, mm -hmm. and, and when you, we look in, in, on the horizons, well, it becomes to the North, you know, it's now beginning to be horizontal but but you know it's it's, a, it's essentially and this has to do with the vertical stature of the human being and you know a, as the bridge between heaven and earth and so the star it's as if the pole star is above our heads at all times and you know this this is a very deep approach to contemplation of divine realities you know so and you know the the, the yogis have a lot to do with that with the you know the so Shumna is the central pathway of the spine, and mm. this, you find you find that you can find that in all traditions. The the uh, uh, among the Hebrews, there's the, the word, the term, the tzaddik. The tzaddik is like, you know, the the, the sheikh or the, or the uh, you know, you know the the wise, completely informed um, individual. And uh, but tzaddik literally literally means the upright. The mm -hmm. upright, and we think, well, that that means he's upright. He's morally upright. But why do they say upright? Mm. You know? It's because that that is 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 the human, the human duty, the human function. Because we hold the amana, we you know are 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 the pole. You know, in a certain sense, the prophet Adam was the first pole. Let's say, mm. and. And we, we are the path between heaven and earth, and we and we, and we must re, re, retain our upright stature, or the whole uh, cosmic order will be dis, disordered and will fall because because it's all resting on, on our shoulders or actually on the top of our head, mm. you know. And that's that's that sense, you know. And, and in fact, uh, tzaddik um, is related to the Hebrew letter uh, tzaday, I think it is, which symbolically i read somewhere it's associated with the north so they have you know, they had that whole idea you know so here's i i found something here in something i wrote this, this this is a sufi rendition of it so let me read this it's not that long yeah, yeah that's fine Bismillah. okay it says i'm starting here sort of the, in the middle of everything it is the transcendent light whose eternal moment is the winter solstice it is the midnight sun. In the words of Ari Korban, from spiritual body and celestial earth, from Mazdian Iran to Shiite Iran, following the exposition of Sheikh Karim Khan Kermani. This is quoting from uh, Ari Korban. It says, and he, he's uh, paraphrasing or, or, or he's epitomizing uh, uh, Karim Khan Kermani. He says, the spiritual history of humanity since Adam is the cycle of prophecy following the cycle of cosmogony, which means creation of the cosmos. But though the former follows the train of the latter, it is in the nature of a reversion, a return, and a reascent to the pleroma. The pleroma is the all, okay? That is exactly what it means to see things in Hercalia, which is the eighth climb, you know, the, the imaginal, um, you know, climb or continent or whatever world that somehow intersects with this world, mm -hmm. but isn't, is, it, it, it intersects with this world. You know, you can, in, in a certain state, you can actually walk right into it, but it is not this world as we understand it. It means to see man 
<coughs> excuse me, and his world essentially in the vertical direction. The Orient origin, the East, which orients and magnetizes the re return and reascent, is the celestial pole, which is, you know, that's why I call it instead of orientation, I call it boreation, which is, means orientation or, you know, relationship to the North. Uh, it means, uh, okay, celestial pole to the celestial pole, the cosmic North, the emerald rock at the summit of the cosmic mountain of Kaf, the very place where the world of Rokalia begins. Mm -hmm. The earth of light, the Terra Lucinda of Manichaeism is also situated in the direction of the cosmic North. In the same way, according to the mystic Abdul Karim Jili, the earth of souls is a region in the far north, the only one not to have been affected by the fall of Adam. It is the abode of the men of the invisible, ruled by the mysterious prophet Hidr. A characteristic feature is that its light is that of the midnight sun, hence the evening prayer is unknown there, dawn rising before the sun has set. Then I'm quote, this is me again. The midnight sun also appears in the first chapter of the Gospel of John as the light which shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended, comprehendeth it not. The psychic or natural man cannot encompass the spirit or the reality of the pneumatic man, the spiritual man. The psyche must be darkened in spiritual self annihilation before the sun of spirit can dawn. And the only point where such annihilation can take place is the spiritual heart, which the Sufis identified as, as the barzakh or isthmus between the two seas of the material world and the realm of the spirit, mm -hmm. and which in mythological terms is considered to be the seat of the immortal prophet Hidra, the green one, and of the earthly paradise. Interestingly, the Arab, Arabic barzakh is quite similar in both sound and meaning to the Tibetan word bardo, which denotes either inter intermediary plane or the time period between any two points considered as its beginning and end. Mm -hmm. The letter Z often changing to D according to the laws of linguistic transformation. The present moment is always intermediary between the world of material concerns and identifications and the realm of the spirit mm. it is only now in what the Sufis call the wakt that the annihilation of the natural or psychic man and the realization of the pneumatic man can take place and only the human form as epitomized by the spiritual heart as center and ruler of the psyche stands as intermediary between the material and spiritual worlds it is this that makes us in muslim terms Khalifa, God's fully empowered representative on earth. It is the transcendent light whose eternal moment is the winter solstice. It is the midnight sun. I already said that. I guess I, I copy this twice. Right. So, yeah. So, you know, that's the, um, the lore of Hyperborea, if you will, coming from Sufism. So, right. So, I think this idea of like ihdina sirat al muslim guide us to the straight path. Qama yuqimu means to stand up, right? Even in salah, we say qad qama tis salah, stand up for prayers. So it's qama yeah. yuqimu. So it's like our journey, our spiritual journey, is vertical. It's yeah. almost that's the 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 picture. Because sometimes, uh, you know, when we say straight path, it almost looks like it's f in front of us like it's a path well and, and but, in a certain sense it, it is that too because you know we we have to go through the moment of our lives as if you know we're, we're, we're traveling across the surface of the earth but it, it it is also in a deeper sense it's vertical in a deeper sense it's it's central you know it's, it's even beyond rising a, 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 along a ladder you know it's 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 just deepening you know um, progressively removing the veils from the heart but you know you see it on different levels but so this is the idea of, of hyperborea it's the north it's the pole you know it's 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 the point around which the whole universe turns and so it's the point of of divinity or you know one approach to the point of divinity 
Now, so, the occults have changed this, uh, in especially after the Nazis and stuff. Yeah. And they've kind of like given this promise that we will give you this land of paradise or this utopia. And uh, they start thinking that it's physically the North Pole. The yeah, Pole. yeah, that's that's one. They, 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 they materialize it and they make it an idol. You know? um, definitely. Um, and this is what that Admiral Bird we were talking about last time, last week, yeah. um, you know, he, he tries to make it like North Pole has this place where there's gardens and these lands and yeah, and that's that's a myth. I mean, uh, the, the Greeks believed that Apollo came, who was the sun god, you know, came from Hyperborea. He was called, uh, one of his epithets was Sol Invictus, which means the sun unconquered, mm -hmm. which is probably a way of talking about, you know, I went to this place where the sun never set. And mm -hmm. so these some people said, oh, that's the paradise of the sun, where Apollo lives, the sun god, you know. And then later he came south from from there and, you know, took over the uh, oracle at Delphi and did various things and became you know a god of the Greeks. So, um, so that's the myth. But but you know the, the and it's also in in uh, actually in Genesis where um, bec because um, the Garden of Eden you know has the tree of life and, and the tree of life is another symbol of the pole. It's it's vertical. You know that's that. The pole is the tree of life. And Adam and Eve, you know, sinned, according to uh, Hebrews, and they were expelled from paradise, and they had, and then they moved to the east of Eden. From and, uh, and they couldn't go back. They couldn't go back because an angel with a flaming sword was posted and saying, you can't come back to Hyperborea mm -hmm. until you, 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 you follow, you know, what God has in store for you now in, in this different state of things you know mm -hmm. and, and the different state of things is they were looking to the east and and the east is is for, where the sun you know comes up it's mm -hmm. it's like that's and i'm sort of following native american lakota symbolism as well you know that, that that's the point of revelation you know the the, the 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 sun comes and brings light into the darkness but you know when you're looking at the pole it's always light Whereas now you're saying we're in darkness and yet the light comes to us. And that's where we have to be. You know, we, we, we have to admit, you know, uh, we can't just identify with being, in, in, you know, in a higher world. Because at this point, that's all done with the ego or, or with the imagination. It isn't, mm. you know, because there's a barrier to it. And, and so we, we have to follow the norms. You know, you know, God sends Quran, you know, God sends revelation into this world and, and and teaches us how to live and we have to follow it. if we want to get back and then maybe in an inner way we can we can rise back to the pole but everybody wants to just go right back oh i see it's to the north or or it's it's the pole of of uh of the universe it's the pole star it's that that whole thing well let's just let's just do it you know let's just oh too much For, forget all this sharia stuff let's just go mm. and we can't do that because, um, you know, because Adam and Adam and Eve came came to this world, you know, which is was Allah's will, even though it was through shortcomings of theirs, it was still His will that that they be the, uh, you know, that that Adam had be be His caliph in this world, and and we have to deal with this world. So this, uh, I guess, North Pole. Uh idea of hyperborea the superior white race flat earth and the rise of neo-nazism now in america in britain in in the ukraine um makes me think uh that i wonder how shaitan is going to use this because it's also tied into ufos and flat earth and it's all like intermixed and what I, what I struggle with, and maybe you have some comments about this, is that Ukraine is where the Khazaria tribe was. This was the tribe that became Jewish. Yeah. And this is where part of the Holocaust happened. And this is where the neo-Nazis had their theories and ideas and 
and now there is a very strong rise of neo-Nazism in the world, really. Uh, people are not talking about it as much, but the way Ukraine is recruiting people to come and fight is through white supremacy. So they are, uh, you know, the, they they are in touch with these groups on the internet, like the KKK and other white supremacist groups, and saying, "Hey, come over here to Ukraine." Yeah. To how how do they make the Russians look less white than them? That's what I'd like to. Know. So in. Donbass, they were oppressing the Russians. Yeah. And so the, I, I don't know how that works exactly, to tell you the truth. <laughs> That's a good question. But I think they see themselves as superior to the Russians. And uh, so that's that's just, it's. I wonder how that's going to play a role. Well, it's, yeah. Uh, and, you know, here we get to Alexander Dugan, who also, you know, w wants to appropriate a not entirely un-Nazi idea of the hyperborean myth you know yes. i yes. mean the, the russians versus the ukrainians is another one of those you know yajuz yajuj versus majuj conflicts which are you going to take a side on that ultimately you know in in mm -hmm. in, in more historical simpler terms you, you might see you know value in one side or the other but there, there's there's a point where all of all of that conflict is barren because it's not the real conflict. Mm. You know? And um, I mean, Alexander Dugan, I mean, he really all along, he said, we, we need World War Three. We need Armageddon. We need to destroy this entire world. And out of the chaos will come something new, mm. which is very dangerous and really very stupid. Yeah. And he talks about sacred geography. So for him, the North is more sacred than the south and for him the east is more sacred than the west yeah well that's um that's very similar to uh, julius avola who's one of you know his big influences the idea okay the, the, here we get you know something that that rene Guénon talked about um the north would represent the essential pole of form and the south would represent the substantial form or materia or matter now, the thing is, according to scholastic philosophy, which basically comes from Aristotle, everything that is real is a union of form and map. Mm -hmm. Their union, that, that, that's, they're like, you know, the sublime pen and the guarded tap. That, that's, that's the equivalent of, you know, concepts in Islam or, or the masculine pole and the feminine pole. And the union of these um, produces everything that is real, you know, whereas, you know, if, if form simply stays in its realm of form, then, you know, it's, it's, it's got a perfection about it and eternity about it, but it has no substance. So it's like an idea. Whereas if, if you just have the, uh, you know, the substantial pole or materia or matter, you you have all this substance, but but it but it's chaotic because it has no form. It's substantial, you know. It's 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 real to the sense that 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 that, it, that it's actual, but but it's it has no form. And these have to come together in order to create any real thing. Hmm. Now, the 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 uh, one of the of the myths of uh, that talks about that is when uh, Queen Bilkis from either Ethiopia or Yemen, wherever she came from, mm. comes north and, and is united with King Solomon. She, she represents a materia, you know? She, mm. uh, she, she's polytheistic. Mm. You know, she has no unity. She has no form, mm. right? Mm. That polytheism is relatively formless in relationship to monotheism. So she's attracted and goes and marries, you know, King Solomon, who represents, the, 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 you know, uh, form and, and the unity of God. And their union produces, I forget the name of their son, who, who is, you know, claimed as the origin of the kings of Ethiopia, the last of whom was Haile Selassie, you know, who, who later came, you know, south to, to, to uh, Ethiopia, some say, bearing the Ark of the Covenant, which the Ethiopians claim to have, you know, the actual Ark, Ark of the Covenant in the uh, 
chapel there. So, but anyway, this whole, uh, you know, I'm going to call it a myth, not because it's unreal, but because it's it's a, a symbolic story um, of union of, of so Solomon and Bilkis, uh, which in 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 the, the Hebrew world is uh, the union of Solomon with the Shulamite, you know, which with, with his his consort, you know, his his his, his eternal twin, and. Um, that's you know that's something else uh, you know having to do with with north and south now south becomes evil or um or inferior uh when it tries to operate on its own you know when when it will not unite with form it mm. just it wants to to be its own thing and it do, it doesn't want to submit to being formed by something from the celestial world, from the essential pole. And so that's when it's negative. This is what uh, poetry poet William Blake called the female will, which sounds pretty, uh, you know, male chauvinist, but, you know, it, it, in other words, it, the, the will of, of relativity and incompleteness and multiplicity trying to will something, which it can't do because it has in, in any effective way because it has no unity. Mm. Right. So, so so this is this is what you have. And uh you know, and uh Julius Evola said some very interesting things about how you know higher civilizations are hyperborean and, and then the civilizations that the, of the south <clears throat> tend to worship a goddess rather than a god. And he makes some very interesting points about that. You know, there's something to that, and, and you can see that myth in, in the Solomon and Bilkis. So, um, but what's interesting that, that, that there's a, um, the UFO myth, one, one of the branches of it is an inversion of the Hyperborean myth and saying the UFOs came from not the North Pole, but the South Pole, or, 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 or they have secret bases in the South Pole, or Hitler, you know, escaped and, and, and did not die at the end of World War II and went to Argentina. Then he went to, to uh, Antarctica. And there are secret Nazi bases in Antarctica where the Nazis have made contact with the UFOs and this and this. And there's a guy called um, Michael Sala, hmm. who is has got a running a cult that basically purveys this myth. Hmm. And you know he he's sort of a little bit to the side of the major UFOlogy now, but I think he'll come back. <laughs> the time will come, you know. So. Um, and the the other the other interesting thing about the, the negative aspect of, of this, this the South Pole rather than the North Pole is all the writings of HP Lovecraft. Mm. Which, or the two writers who were talking about the evil South Pole were HP Lovecraft and Edgar Allan Poe. They had oh, both had stories about that myth, you know. Mm. And and you know, and Lovecraft was was pretty much a you know, a kind of a Satanist who worshipped, he worshipped or or talked about the Titans. He didn't call them the Titans, mm -hmm. but, you know, his Kulhu being and other beings in his mythology are essentially the Titans, who are like the jinn who ruled the earth in an earlier world age and are now fallen, and they've gone to the substantial pole and that they've lost contact with, you know, the, the, the spiritual influence and influx that comes from the north from, from, from the essential pole from the uh you know the world of form which is the world of the names of god you know mm -hmm. they're, they're 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 sunk sunk in the the subtle analog of the material world and it's a very negative thing and uh so uh you know there, there's an inverted hyperboreanism which you will get in the ufo world and, and what's interesting about Hyperborea, though, um, in the Apocalypse uh, in the New Testament, mm -hmm. you have basically a story, you know, that there, there's, uh, it talks about the Whore of Babylon. Whore of Babylon is feminine pole and uh, in, a, in a totally negative way. 
you know, and the Whore of Babylon represents a, a world uh, mercantile empire, which is decadent and rich and um, which destroys human souls and buys and sells human souls. You know? And that's pretty much the world that, uh, that the West has created until very mm. recently. That world is starting to fall apart. Mm. But, you know, you, 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 have, you have, you know, this is the whole idea that Dugan and other people talk about the decadent West. Well, that's the whore of Babylon. That's right in the, uh, in the apocalypse. But unfortunately, who conquers the whore of Babylon is, is even worse. The beast. And the beast does all the job. You know, and so in other words, the, the negative feminine principle, you know, which might well be symbolized by Nancy Pelosi or somebody or, or Hillary Clinton, you know, uh, gets gets so so negative. And, and, and this is it's from this that, that we get this 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 crazy desire to destroy gender. And that's know? actually a very important point. And you're absolutely correct from it perspective of eschatology as as bad as liberalism is and with everything yeah. it comes as this collapses it's going to be replaced by something even worse yeah and and, and it I, may I, look I, alluring in the beginning or it may look very alluring with all its promises well, it's, it's, it's you know it's it, it, see alexander dugan pretends you know i am he says you know we we are hyperborean masculine vertical upright traditional you know, hierarchical, and you know, uh, th th this this is the restoration of all th that was destroyed by the horizontal, chaotic, feminine, you know, uh, o o ocean going uh, civilization, global civilization of the West, and, and we 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 will sweep that aside, and we will bring back tradition. Well, mm. this is not the case. If you read his books. You know, he's bringing back inverted tradition. That this is what Rene Guénon said. He says the reign of quantity, and the reign of quantity is the substantial, where, where, where everything falls into the power of the substantial pole. In, in a cycle of manifestation, starts at the essential pole, where form and relative eternity and and stability, and and you know, you know. The, the one God, you know, who is masculine in relation to manifestation in, in his or her own essence, it's something else. You know, Alzat is, you know, as I understand it, is, is a, a, uh, a feminine noun in Arabic and yes. also, uh, you know, Rahma or al-Rahman, you know, is, is also feminine because it comes from the root meaning womb. And so, you know, in in in, in the inner world, you, you might say Allah has, his, his feminine aspect comes out, whereas in relationship to, to this world, he's masculine. So anyway. Um, so can I present something to yes, you from please, the Quran? Yes. And then I want your input on these verses of the Quran as I will try to explain it. Um, let me share with you. So I want to put, I guess, Dugan in the context of Quran, uh, at least try to do that. And I want to see your uh, feedback. So, Allah subhanahu wa says in the Quran uh, about Christians and Jews. Uh, let me. Uh, Subhanallah. Let me just mention the verses, and then I'll come come to that when it comes to my mind. On the Quran presents these two types of Christianities. It seems. The first is a Christianity that kind of seems to merge with Judaism. So, and and I speak about this from a, a more of an eschatological perspective. So, for example, uh, you will find, uh, let me sh share with you the verse so it's clear. Uh, 
Okay, so here's one version of it. Okay. And the Jews say Christians have no claim. They have no basis for what they say. And the, the Christians say the Jews have nothing. Even though they're both reading the same book. So here, Christians and Jews are at odds against one another in this verse. Mm -hmm. But then uh, you will you'll find, for example, in ayah number 11, they will say you can't enter Jannah unless you're a Jew or a Christian. And then the Quran also tells us, uh, for example, that you know the Jewish and the Christian people, they'll never be happy with you until you follow their way. And then you have another verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah that's very interesting, especially from today's perspective. So you, you could say that there is a Christianity that finds itself merged with the Jews, which is a new phenomenon, meaning this is a modern phenomenon because the Christians have always... Yeah, evangelical Christian Zionism. Exactly, exactly yes. So that... Christianity. Now, the other Christianity is still exists, but this uh you can say this Santa Claus Christianity uh is different from like Christianity in other parts of the world, like Africa or the Christian Arabs, for example, mm -hmm. uh the Christians in uh Eastern Orthodox. So I wanted your opinion on in the context of those two verses. And now this verse, which seems to be playing out in the world today. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, amanu. You'll certainly find the people most severe against the believers, al-Yahud, the Yahud, waladina ashraku, and the polytheists. So if you know what's happening in India, Muslims being oppressed in India. So Indian yeah. nationalism has become Hindu nationalism. Right. And right. Israeli nationalism has become Jewish nationalism. And then it says, And you'll find, and this will, you will find is in the future tense here, or you could say in, a, in the emphasis of future tense, but it also has present tense in it, meaning mm -hmm. in Arabic future and present are together. You'll find those people nearest to you in affection. Of those who say inna nasara, we are truly Christians, you can say. Meaning, if you look at the context of the ayah, they are separating their identity away from the polytheists. And they're also separating their identity from the Jewish. So they're not evangelical. And they have some other qualities. This is because amongst them there are priests. وَرُحْبَانْ and monks. وَأَنَّهُمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ And number three, they're not arrogant. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been talking about the covenants of the Prophet with the Christians yeah. in that context, but also in an eschatological perspective. Russia seems to fit this verse where they do have more and more monks. They're like having a church every three days, meaning they're, they're making a church. Every, so like after the Soviet communist, it seems like it's having a Christian revival yeah it had a christian and you know i just hope that that uh eastern orthodox russian orthodox church will not be destroyed by by, by a liberation uh because it seemed to have been preserved by oppression <laughs> oh know? okay 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 interesting so where do we where do you put these verses of the quran in dugan with his i guess supremacist well, so, Dugan, I mean, first you have to ask, is Dugan uh, really uh, Eastern Orthodox or Russian Orthodox? I mean, there, there are stories about Dugan, and I get these from someone on the web called Freedom Alternative. I don't know his actual name. He has some very good, you, you, he's, he's got, if it's still there, a, a wonderful, you know, YouTube video on Dugan. And he, and he, he claims uh, there are Eastern Orthodox priests, Russian Orthodox priests, who, who said, who condemned Dugan for introducing 
polytheism, pagan polytheism, and Satanism into mm -hmm. Orthodox. And most or all of the people who denounced Dugan were either later defrocked or died. Mm -hmm. So Dugan pretends to be one thing, but he is not. He will pretend when he talks to Eastern Orthodox, he will be a pious Eastern Orthodox believer. When he talks to Muslims, he will be all for you know, the, the Muslim enterprise and, and, and say Russia will help you. When he talks to any, to when he talks to Satanists secretly, you know, he says, I, I found something in one of his books saying, you know, like, like he, he, he says, we're, uh, <clears throat> we're like the Hebrew prophets who said, who said, um, Edom, arise, throw off your shackles. Wait a minute, <coughs> Edom is the hereditary enemy of the Jews. Adam is the kingdom of darkness. Adam is the nation whose presiding angel or spiritual principle is Samael, who is Satan. So mm -hmm. he's giving a little, a little, you know, word to the wise, to the Satanists. Hey guys, you know, I'm on your side. And he does this with every single group, you know, you can imagine. You mm -hmm. know, he 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 uh he he has a wonderful critique of postmodernism, but there's no one who has more of a postmodern view than he. He is the quintessential postmodernist. By and, agreeing and, with everyone. <laughs> and, yeah, he, he agrees with everyone, but and, 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 and he has a wonderful critique of postmodernism, but he is a postmodernist. So he's an absolute nihilist. We have to understand this, there is no truth in this. Book. He has real insights, amazing insights, better that, that, than many people on many subjects, many very important subjects. But when it comes to, 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 to what he's actually doing, uh, you know, he, he does not uh, believe in any kind of objective truth. He's a total nihilist. So he will speak in the language of every group precisely what they want to hear. He'll talk to the Turks and say, well, maybe we'll, 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 have, we'll have a new, uh, you know, a new Ottoman Empire. You know when 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 things you know, are settled. When yeah. when, when Ru Russia uh, you know triumphs, he'll talk to the Eastern Orthodox Christians and say, "Well, maybe we'll have a new Byzantine Empire." You know, it doesn't matter that these are the same the same lands, the same place. You know, yeah. he's got he's got a, a line for every for everyone. You know, he he, he went on on uh, uh, you know Dr. Morrow, my colleague in the Covenants Initiative. Um, met him on the Arbaeen pilgrimage in, in mm. Iraq. He mm. was going on, on a Shia pilgrimage because he was saying, I am the friend of the Shia, of course. And he, he knew just how to speak to them. And and Dr. Morrow, you know, came back and said, well, I've, I've, I've met, the, he had an interview with Dugan. I've met this guy and he's, he, he's, he's, he's a, a, a humble, pious, Eastern Orthodox believer who, who only wants all of, of, of the struggling ethnic and religious groups of the world no longer to be oppressed and homogenized by this Western Atlantean hegemony, and 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 you know he he wants Russia to be to the pat to the patron of of, of of the free determination of all of these groups, you know. And then I showed him, you know, some videos he was doing where, where well, you know, he, he was saying the Ukrainians Ukrainians must be destroyed. You know, well, they're, they're not on the list. You know, he's not going to protect them. They're to be destroyed, you know. And uh, places where he said, well, we don't really like working with ISIS, but we'll do it if that's what it takes to bust the United States and the Atlantean, Atlantean hegemony. And things he said about Islam were just completely off the wall and wrong and, you know, but would appeal to certain uh, elements within Islam, you know. And I showed him Dr. Moore this stuff and he said, and, 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 you know, his mind turned around and he said, mm. this guy's not, is it the job? You know? mm. And I'm afraid that's, that's my view. So of he's human. bad yeah. for Russia and he's bad for Russian Christianity is what you're saying. Well, yeah, I mean, he's, he's, and, you know, the, the, the more churches, this is wonderful. I mean, if it's real, you know, we don't know if it's real. We don't know if it's, you know, and, and I'm sure there are a lot of, um, you know, because you know, we, we before the Soviet Union fell, we we knew my, my wife spent some years going through Russian Orthodoxy, Eastern Orthodoxy in, in California, 
and we knew people. We we knew a, a guy, Alexander, who was from Russia, and he, uh, you know, well, it's amazing who we knew. We we knew the the last of the Romanovs, you know, who lived in Marin County, you know, and Prince Andre, and then his his son, Prince uh, uh, Piotr, uh, Peter, who uh, was working in a garage, you know, he was working in a garage in in uh, Inverness, California. Um, and uh, actually, he he married a, a Sufi woman, a follower of uh, Llewellyn Vaughan Lee, who has a, a Sufi center in Inverness, California. Mm. But uh, you know, he was he was just you know working as a mechanic. He looked like a prince. He had this really tight, uh, curly, dark blonde hair. You know, just just what you want in a prince. But he, he wasn't a prince. He was a mechanic. Um, so anyway, Alexander was talking about what it was like to paint sacred icons under the Soviet system. You know, they had to do it secretly, clandestinely. If you're caught, caught painting an icon, or as they, they say, writing an icon, because it's it's strictly symbolical, as if you know every, every symbol means something. It's like writing, you know? mm. nothing impressionistic. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, and and uh, you know, he he was coming out of that oppression, so. We knew that at, at the moment when when the, the uh, Russian Orthodox Church could express itself again, it was a wonderful moment. But the mm -hmm. question is, you know, how co-opted are they? You mm -hmm. know, and Dugan has a beautiful website called Katehon. Katehon is the force or the intention or whatever you call it that stands against Dajjal and prevents Dajjal from coming into the world. Mm. That's katapon in mm. in Greek, you know, and uh, and it's a wonderful site, and he's got beautiful meditations on Eastern Orthodox things, but then you look at what he says in his books. He's uh, well, you know, he, he says he follows Heidegger, who was a Nazi. No, everybody says Heidegger is a wonderful mystical philosopher. Why do you have problems with him? It's irrelevant that he was a Nazi. Well. I have other problems with him, but it's not irrelevant that he was a Nazi either. You know? yeah. And and so, so he says, well, uh, I, I follow Heidegger, who says that the, the era of the Logos is past, and now we're coming into the, the era of chaos. And of course, the Logos in, Christ, in Christianity is Christ. Mm -hmm. So he's saying the era of Christ is, is goodbye. Christ is old hat. We're now doing chaos. And if mm. you say that, you cannot be an Eastern Orthodox believer in any honest way, because the logos, you know, uh, 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 according to that, you know, religious view is eternal. It's not just a, a phase of history. You can say that 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 Christendom, you know, has passed, which it has in almost everywhere, but in in places like Hungary and and Russia, you know. Uh, the, the, you know, we know there's no longer a Christian civil, civilization in Western Europe, and hardly in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you 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 can't you can't say that that logos is past, and now we take as our principle that we follow chaos. You know, and that's what he did. So, in other words, he completely rejected Christ at that point, and then he turns around and pretends to be a Christian, and he pretends very well because he's an extremely intelligent guy, and he knows a lot of the tradition that he's trying to pervert. So, okay, so I guess. Uh, oh, I wanted to show you this. Uh, you'll find this interesting, just as a point. Uh, Russia Ukraine crisis deterring aliens from making their presence known, says UFO specialist. He's saying because we're fighting, we're looking like children, so the aliens won't come and welcome. You know, they won't be. They're they're not going to make contact because we're acting like children. Anyway, yeah. that's just a side note. But I guess uh, my final question to you um, is that how does Hyperborea flat Earth neo-nazis russia ukraine all of that how do you think this plays out in terms of eschatology well what you are seeing i mean one one thing that 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 putin has achieved he, he even if he never con conquers ukraine even if he's driven entirely out of ukraine we don't know how that's going to go but he, he accomplished something very profound 
I call the Ukraine war a war of secession. He seceded from, you know, what Dugan calls the Atlantean hegemony, you know, from, from the, 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 you know, Western um, globalism at, at, its at its greatest point of power and expansion. Dugan said, I mean, uh, Putin said no. He says, you know, and, and even if he loses the war, you think he suddenly he would lose the war, the, the, the Ukrainians will drive him out if that happens. And then he suddenly says, well, I was wrong. And, you know, can, can I come back in, in, into the Western, you know, uh, uh, you know, can you lift the sanctions and, and, and I'll, I'll come back and be part of Western civilization again? No way. It's too mm. late. He's it's going beyond late. it. He's yeah, point of no return. Yeah, and China and that he's never going to go back. So he really did. Even if he loses Ukraine, he, even if he's, you know, his ass is whipped in Ukraine, he busted uh, Western globalism. He did it. And mm. it's never going to go back. Mm. So, you know, that's pretty heavy. But the problem is, when, and that's that in, in the apocalypse is the horror of Babylon. And the whore of Babylon is is you know is is burned with fire and 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 you know and 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 destroyed by the rise of the beast, and the beast is what Rene Guinon said. He said, "Well, okay, we have the reign of quantity, which is the reign of the substantial pole, which is I would identify with the whore of Babylon, you know, and 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 it's it's uh, okay. A, the reign of quantity, I get it, I get it, I get what you're saying. Yes, you know, yeah, feminine." energy uh, whatever you know you want to call it and but but that is overcome not by a return to tradition but by a, 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 an establishment of anti-tradition and inverted hierarchy because mm -hmm. Hogan says we'll bring you back hierarchy and and and, and, and the pole and, and and the you know the, the hyperborean traditional world it's not true Gainon predicted that this would happen, but it would be inverted hierarchy. And at, at the bottom of that hierarchy, which is they will present as the top, you know, the people who are managing it, uh, is the Antichrist, is all the job. So that this is what he, he says the, the, the final advent of the um of the of the regime of, of Al Dajjal will be when. The reign of quantity is overthrown, and we now have a reign of inverted quality or an inverted hierarchy. That is exactly what Alexander Dugan is and is and is calling for. Ganon mm. says, if if there's a, going to be a reestablishment of something on the order of a sacred a sacred empire in the latter days at, at the final end of the Kali Yuga, the final end of the cycle. That's going to be the, the regime of the Antichrist. It's not going to be a sacred empire. It's going to be an inverted hierarchy. And that's exactly what Dugan and uh, Putin are calling for. Now, the thing is, ultimately, what, whether they win in Ukraine, I don't know. They're going to win this. The West I is going so down. Yeah, West I is going so down too. one way or the other. And, and uh, you know, it's... In awful. fact, I was reading an uh, article that was talking about they, the one of the genius things he did is he didn't expand too much into Ukraine. He kept his supply lines short and let them all come to him. So everyone is coming to his side and he's beating them in that process. They're the ones who have bigger supply lines and they're the ones that are like have to send out. Even people fighting in Ukraine have bigger supply lines than he, yeah. than he has to extend out. And so he's putting all his effort into, okay, you come to me and then I'll destroy you. And yeah, anyway, I was reading an article on that and that was very interesting. Strategy. You know, but but even, you know, beyond the context of the Ukraine, um, Putin is, has already busted the Western globalism and it's never going to come back. And mm -hmm. what will arise, and it was terrible, and, and you understand why everybody that knew what it really was and what it really is just prayed for it to be gone mm -hmm. and and dugan and putin came in and says all right you know we, we 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 will support your your aspirations in this regard and they did and uh but what they will bring will be worse 
and what they bring will be will be the the final the beast you know the the, the final regime of Al Dajjal. Back in two thousand one, in the system of, of Antichrist, I wrote something where I said, you know, we should be ca careful that we don't identify globalism with all its problems simp simplistically with the regime of Antichrist, because mm -hmm. it could be that the leader of a world revolution against globalism would turn out to be the real Antichrist. Mm. That was in 2001. And I must have already read René Guénon's The Reign of Quantity because, and, 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 and you know, uh, looked at that in, in more concrete historical terms because that's basically what he was calling, what he was saying is going to happen. And it's also in, in the... Uh, in the apocalypse, you know, the, the, the horror of Babylon is conquered and overturned by the beast. So let me ask you this. Uh, this reminds me of something, which is the surah that talks, that's supposed to protect us from the Antichrist, surah al -Kahf, that in verse number four and five, there is a specific warning to those who say Allah has adopted a son. Yeah. And before that, it mentions what seems to, if you look at it a little bit more deeply, qayyiman, meaning straight talk, shadida, to warn you of a severe war. I know over here the translation says punishment. But Ba'asan Shadid is used in the Qur'an in other places, also in the sense of war. But if you take it to mean severe punishment or severe war, uh, it's talking about this world. From himself. And to give the good tidings to the believers. Those who do good deeds. For them is a good reward. Makithina fi abada. They'll stay in paradise forever. And then immediately, and the warning is to those who say Allah has adopted a son. They have no knowledge of what they're saying. Nor their forefathers. How evil it is of, of a word that comes out of their mouth. They don't say except a lie. Now, my question, I guess, to you, if you can shed some reflection on why does Sutan Kahaf basically start by a critique of Christianity? That's very interesting. Um, well, I mean, the question... From my point of view, it, it is it is of great significance whether you say begotten or adopted, you know, to begin with. You know, and, and the, the, the translation you showed on the screen says begotten, which is also very clearly, you know. If you want to be very literal, ittahaza means to take. So it would actually literally mean adopted. Yeah. Well, adopted, okay, Um just one point, this is not a central point, which I hope I get to a more central point than this, but adoptionism is a heresy in Christianity. You know, the idea that that, uh, that God adopts a son or, you know, um, ado adopted Jesus Christ and made him his son in a sort of literal way, that, that's considered to be heretical. Mm. Okay, when you talk about begotten, well, um, I mean, he neither begets nor he, he, is he is he begotten, and there's nothing to which he can be compared. And yet, if Allah is the essence of all things, because from the Sufi standpoint, he's the only being, then he is also the essence of the human form. You know, who, who that only exists. You know, as, as if sprouting out of, out of the ground of Allah, because that's the ground from which all things come. And he's also the essence of, of the creative power that we see in the universe that, that could be identified with the Holy Spirit. So, you know, and, and, and Jesus Christ in the Gospels himself, he will say, he will speak of 
his identity with God, and, and then he will deny it. Hmm. And he will say, you know, um, before Abraham came to be, I am. Mm -hmm. And I am is Yah, which is the first syllable of the Hebrew name of God. And, and the Jews recognized that and that he was blaspheming. And so they, you know, picked up stones to, to, uh, to stone him. And so he faded away, you know, and got out of there. Uh, but then other, other times they say, you know, someone says, you know, good master, good rabbi, you know, and, and he says, why do you call me good? There's no one good, but, but, but God. So it, it, it's, um, it, it's, it's a very mysterious thing because, you know, because Jesus is called, you know, a, a word of Allah that he cast into, into Mary and a spirit from him, you know, from, and, and what is that exactly? You know, I'm obviously, this is not, you know, literally, you know, Jesus Christ is not literally God, but yet, yet the, the divinity was in him or he was, you know, he was a breath or a spirit from Allah. This is very, you know, so, so anyway, we, we just talk about the, 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 the uncertainty of, because when, when you try to look, look at Christian doctrine and, 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 and Islamic doctrine, they can come closer, you can come closer than you, you thought they ever could, but they never touch because, you know, we have to, we have to stand with he neither begets nor is begotten and there's nothing to which he can can be compared <clears throat> so why this is a good question perhaps so one thing that i thought of that i'll because, share with you it's because if if the the the, the idea of of a divine you know a, a, a human being who is literally the divine son of god that opens the door to the job like nothing yes. else. Yes. You know? Definitely. Yeah. At one time I was thinking that it's because of the uh the reformation and then the renaissance that happened after and then the 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 world that was created was technically the fault of bad Christianity in a sense and that paves the way for the jazz. So that's one way I looked at well, it. That, that's one of one of the links in the train, yeah. And then I think now where we're standing in history, we, it it might be even something even more different. Uh, but we'll see, inshallah. Well, and, and the Catholic Church, the, the 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 larger Catholic Church under the Pope, is going in the direction of polytheism. It's going, you know, it, first it's going in the direction of, of denying the v validity of doctrine or theology of any kind, you know, uh, because, you know, what Pope Francis would like to say is, ah, theology, who cares? That's, yeah. that's just intellectuals spinning their wheels. What we need to be is, is good to each other, you know, okay. But, you know, he did say, and, and this never happened before, he said in... Uh, a uh, interview with the Vatican radio, and this was on the Vatican website for years, and then he took it away and I kept it. And he said, guess what? There is no God. Mm. And then he said, what? You're shocked? Why should you be shocked? There is no God. So what? There's no God. Mm. That's all right, because we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So here's where tr Trinitarianism truly came out as as polytheism and it never it never did that before certainly uh uh out of the mouth of a pope it did you know there there were people who would t tend to think that way or they were but they, they were recognized as, as heretics hmm. but the, the 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 pope at that point embraced polytheism and denied god interesting and interesting. you know and and th th this is something that Th this is the dark side of of saying, well, you know, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Finally, what the Quran and and the the Islamic tradition has been warning the Christians against all these centuries finally happened, and it mm. may never have really happened before. You know, mm. there was always because 
you know, the, 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 the prophet considered Christians whom he knew a lot of them to be Trinitarians. Hmm. Well, but, you know, the, the, you're my people, you're my mu'minin in, in, in the, you know, uh, in, in, the, in terms of the covenants and the, the constitution of Medina and, and the political spiritual entity that, 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 that we are forming, you know, you, you, are, you are part of it. We'll, we will include you if, if you fulfill certain um, responsibilities and, and, and you, you do not betray us like some of, some of the Jews did. And, uh, you know, to, to the Quraysh uh, you know, during the wars between Mecca and Medina. And if you, you know, uh, you know, we will accept you. He understood, he said, there's no Trinitarianism and no monasticism in Islam. And yet he, he you know, uh, respected the, the priests and yes. monks and said, you know, Christians are good because there are priests and monks among them. He knew that, that the, uh, that the Christians, some of them, those he t totally accepted, like the monks of St. Catharines, were Trinitarians. So that, on some level, was not a problem. But perhaps he was looking ahead, but this is a dangerous doctrine, and the day will come when, you know, its evil will come out, and this will be an announcement of al-Dajjal. Not, not that it's, you know, an evil doctrine in itself, but it's always... It, it it's an esoteric doctrine. It's very subtle. It's mm. you know it, it it it's a way of trying to talk about the unity of God. The God is is one as the essence of humanity, as one as the power that projects and creates the universe, and as one in in its own mystery. And that mm. and all those three are one. There is only one God. There's no God but God. Credo in unum Deum. You know it's 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 a, it's a it's a deep and subtle doctrine that gets immediately literalized and when i was growing up as a catholic you know i get the idea well i'm looking at my catholic missile god is an old man a young man and a bird you know and that's oh, what you thought, right and i'll yeah. say the old man is the father a young man is christ jesus and then there's this bird you know and, and okay if 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 you have a, a deeply mystical understanding of that mystery, then you know the, the, it all testifies to the unity of God. It doesn't mm. testify to God in three parts. But that's you know this is is the problem of Christianity because it is a, it's a very deeply esoteric doctrine. It's like it's like a big tarik, you know, where where you know you you, you don't have just a a, a few you know, Fukara, who are very close to the sheikh and understand these things, but it's a, it's a tarika, and almost you could say the same for Shiism in a strange way, mm -hmm. that became, you know, uh, something that was available to everyone. And so it, it, it had to be turned in, into a kind of a myth. Well, God has three parts. And, and what I was talk, talked about, uh, to, told in Catholic school, is, well, well what is this Trinity, Father? What do you mean? How could there be? And the priest would just say, well, we don't know it's a mystery. You know? Okay. But people will try to figure it out anyway. And a lot of the figuring mm -hmm. out they do is going to be very destructive, you know, mm -hmm. to the sense of God's unity. So, this so, I so, number five here, in uh, uh, they have no knowledge, nor their fathers, their forefathers. This kind of, this phrase, walali abayim, and nor their forefathers, kind of reminds me of the idea of the fathers of the church. Uh, so in that case, do you think it's a bigger critique on Roman, well, I Roman I Catholicism? I, I, I mean, the, 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 because there are some very subtle um you know, renditions of the Trinity in the Church Fathers, which, which you know, uh, in other words, they, they they lead your your consciousness beyond, you know, this literalistic idea of God has got three parts. Mm. Which you're not supposed to say anyway, because God is one. You know, I mean, the, uh, so much of Christian doctrine was. Uh, 
established in order to deal with heresies. You know, I mean, there was a heresy that 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 that, that said, uh, well, you know, Christ was not a real human being; he was just an apparition. You know, so so that was wrong. So they they had to come come forward with, you know, Christ had a definite human nature. And then they say, well, but, you know, th there was nothing divine in Christ. He was a great teacher and this and this. But, you know, th th there was nothing deeper than that. He was not, as the Quran says, you know, a word, you know, that Allah cast in the womb of Mary and a spirit from him. He was just a man. He was a very intelligent and, and a very good man. And, and you know, and, and that doesn't work either. So they have to come up with a doctor. Well, there's the hypostatic union. God, you know, uh, Christ has two natures, a human and a divine nature, which are separate and yet, and, and, and yet True, mysteriously, yeah. upon, they're fused, but not confused, right. you know, and it's very awkward. And, and, and th th these, these are dogmas that, that are simply outer um, walls. This is, don't go beyond this in that direction or you'll fall into a terrible error, or don't go, go beyond in this direction or something, you know, you'll be totally in the darkness but as for something that leads you directly you know to to to, to the doctrine of, of of the real nature of god it's uh it it's it's a long road you know? mm. it's so but you know i i don't want to just damn uh christian theology christian yeah. prediction Christian theology in itself, but I want to say that in our time, the dangers that, that, that the prophet and the Quran discerned in the Christian view of things have come true. Mm. They have come true. And and the sure. may come directly out of that. Who knows? Mm. Okay, inshallah. So we'll leave it at this for today, and we will inshallah continue next Wednesday. Inshallah. Okay. Okay. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.